Moore, thanks for joining us. My um, pleasure. I know that in your career you've had the chance, I think, to meet several U.S. presidents. And, um, and I know you also had an opportunity to spend some time with President Reagan. Yeah. And I, I wondered if, given you've met several, if you, you know, given that President Reagan still, still to me seems to be so much in vogue today, still a popular uh, U.S. president, is there anything about him that you think set him apart from other presidents? Yeah, I think there, there, there first place he had a wonderfully easy, simple way of speaking. I mean, he was very clear and therefore connected to a lot of people and his entire political life was such that he had just a huge reservoir of credibility and that matched with his ability to speak in clear terms I think was one of the remarkable things that he had in other words he really was to use the phrase a great communicator right right um, I will also say one other thing he had a great sense of humor and he he was as good a joke teller as anybody you will ever meet and he used them to illustrate a point. But if you heard the jokes more than once, which I was privileged to do, he told them exactly the same the second time as he did the first time, or the third time as he did the same intonation. He was a magnificent joke teller. So as I will try and make reference when I speak, I, I used to save up all the best jokes I had <laughs> to be with him. I mean, it was just hilarious fun. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, during the Reagan presidency, there was uh, the famous uh, Nicholas Daniloff affair, which yes. you are remarkably uh, well versed in. I, I know that it ended up um, quite well for uh, for you, for U.S. News, for the President Reagan, for the country, frankly. And I wonder if during those tense times, if there was anything in particular, I think as you got to know the president, um, that you learned about him as a as a person. Well. Um, Absolutely. Uh, it was extraordinary. to be. I was down in Washington working in the White House for virtually a month. And uh, the president was at many of these meetings and otherwise I worked with his senior staff. But what was remarkable to me is that when we would get into the meetings with the president, he, he was very insightful. He got the key issue right away and he was remarkably decisive. I mean, anybody who didn't think he was making the decisions had no idea what was going on. And believe me, his staff understood who was making the decisions. So it was wonderful to watch because he, he would just listen very carefully and he'd get the point right away and he'd make the point and then he'd make the decision. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, when you think about how, frankly, a lot of the people in who were trying to convey the way the decisions were, were made, we call them the press, they didn't get a lot of that. So I came away with an extraordinary impression of this man. And I have to say the other part of it, um, he loved to tell jokes, I loved to tell jokes. We would tell jokes to each other. And um, I was, uh, it was when I really sort of became, had a, a relationship with a friendship. And I was therefore happily uh, invited to a number of other dinners or occasions and uh, sitting at his table and we would swap jokes. <laughs> it was one of the great pleasures I mean, you, if you can imagine what, yeah. what a joy it was. Yeah. Uh, and he was as good as they get at the joke teller. Yeah, well, that's great to hear. Um, okay, this last piece, this last question is, it's, I know it's just pure speculation, but as you well know, <clears throat> the country in many ways, particularly economically, is going through some very tough times right yeah. now. And I've seen your commentary on some of the uh, programs. Um, where you felt there's been somewhat of a lack of focus on the part of the current administration as to prioritizing and going after the right problems at the right time. And I, I, again, speculatively, but if President Reagan were alive today, how do you think he would be approaching this extremely tough economic environment? Well, frankly, um, I frank the toughest uh, part of what I think is going on in this country, which I think a lot of people say is, is that uh, our political system is not functioning that we are not making the tough decisions and we're not asking really for any sacrifice on the part of a lot of people. And what you have witnessed in the most graphic and public ways is what I have described as political corruption, which is buying off people in the Senate, in the House, in the most blatant way. It has, I think, done tremendous damage to the confidence that this country and the people of this country have in the way our politics are working. I never had that feeling with Reagan and nobody ever had that feeling with Reagan. And there was a quality to him. You could agree or disagree with him, 
But you know, he was playing the game straight. And if he had to ask for sacrifice, by God, he did it. And as I said, he had this reservoir of credibility and support with the American people. He had a way. We were in very tough times, both psychologically and economically, when he came into office. And he was able to address it and deal with it, and he never lost the confidence of the country. That is not true of what's going on now. Both the Congress and the President have lost the confidence of the country to a degree we have not witnessed. The approval rating of the Congress is below 20 percent. The approval rating of the President has dropped as much in the first year as in the history of modern presidents. So there is a real sense in the country that something isn't working and that our leadership that we would like to have is not there at either the congressional level or at the president. That was never the case with Reagan. Yeah, right. Thanks, Mark.